Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. I figured maybe we'd uh, do a uh, little thing about uh, making a bin. Um, DIY, uh, cheap and easy. Uh, so uh, anyway, first thing you got to do is uh, go out to Walmart. Buy you a two pack of these 28 quart bins. They come together as two for 10, $5 a piece, pretty cheap. Uh, the bins are 23 and a half, 17, uh, 23 and a half long, 17 inches wide, and about 6 inches deep. They come together strapped up, so just take your little scissors here, pop that strap loose, pop off the two tops, set them to the side, get rid of this, pull this one out. There's the label. Five bucks a piece. Big deal. 28 quart bin. So what I do is I put six quarts in it of bedding. Now you can use whatever bedding you want. That's five quarts there. And that makes six. What well, quart cans, what I use to measure most of my stuff with. I, if I do measure, once you get into it and you and, 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 it, and it goes, you learn. You can do it by eye. I can basically look at it and tell if it's wet or dry, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, just spread it out. Make sure you got good coverage. And that's, that's roughly when it's like, well, before I wet it down. It's roughly about two and a half inches, three inches probably. Take you some water. I don't measure, but we will. So we're going to put one quart of water in here and we'll see what it gives us. So we'll mix it up a little bit, see what the dampness feels like. Once you get, once you get into it and you, you do it enough, you can learn. I mean, you'll know, you'll be able to feel, tell, look, smell. And uh, it's real simple, not complicated, a little messy. But uh, you'll learn that part too. Yes, it's messy. That's why I have this in a room that's not used in my house. It's, uh, it's not heated either. So, like this morning, it's uh, kind of chilly down here. It stays chilly down here. Mm -hmm. Get that dry stuff mixed in. You don't want any dry pockets. You want to make sure everything is good and moist. Your worms are going to breathe through their skin. They don't have lungs. They do have five hearts, but they don't have lungs. So you need to make sure you keep them wet. Moisture is your friend. It can be your enemy at the same time. Too wet is better than too dry. I will tell you that. Too wet, all you have to do, add some more carbon. Throw in some more bedding. That's basically what it is. Bedding is food, and bedding is carbon. So you just, if you if you mess up, you put too much water, throw some more bedding in there, get it down to a good consistency. People like to squeeze it in drips or something. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, just get it down to that. And that's about perfect for them right there. It's glistening, it's wet, and everything's nice and mixed. It just got a lot heavier now. So, uh, I don't use the big bins. I used to. Oh, hold on. I'll take it back. I do use big bins. I use really big bins. I don't use the 18-gallon totes that are like this tall. Because when I was working them, I had to bend over and get into it. And I blocked off like all my light. I couldn't see. Um, I, I, I took up all the space. And it was just, I don't know, a little cumbersome. So I changed over these flat bins that are a lot lower. And um, this seems to be easier. Now, this is how I do it. You can put your spin on it. There's um, probably 30 different ways to do this. Um, and same thing, cardboard, shredded paper. Run that. Just mix it the same way. Get it good and damp. Um, you, you can always tell here, just look at this little rib around this bin here. Um, you know, you don't want any water standing in that. You want that. You want the water in here. So get that done like that. Real simple, done up. Now you're gonna have to get you some worms. 
So we're gonna get us some worms. Stole some worms out of the bathtub this morning. Boom. Worms. Hey, there's worms. Take them like that. Spread them out a little bit. It's at least a hundred. I counted a hundred. I had taken some hatchlings out of a, a another bin and throw them in here too, just to get them out of that that finished castings bin. I'm growing them out in. And guess what? You're done. You, you got a worm bin. Let them run down. Um, I usually don't feed them. I let them acclimate. Um, like I said, bedding is food. So let them let them run down. Let them get get acclimated, and then come back and feed them three days later. That's usually what I do. So, um, and and I hear people talk about leaving the light on. You can do that when you first set a bin. If you want to, if and if you're not running a lid, I run a lid on mine. But if you're not running a lid and you want to put the the plastic over top, that's fine. Good tip is is cut it cut it really tight to the edges here, because if you don't, that's gonna dry out, and then there'll be water in it, and then you'll. I mean. I don't add water to mine. I blend my food, and then I don't have to worry about watering them. But if you are going to run it different, um, you're going to put the plastic piece over the top. That's fine. Just cut it as tight as you can to the sides and get it as tight so that way you lose less moisture through evaporation. And it gets you to less watering. And like I said, when you get to watering, you get to overwatering, you got problems. If you don't water it enough, you got problems. If all this dries out, that's less space they're going to use. They're not going to use the dry spots. They, they're not going to like it. They're going to stay away from it. Um, feeding. I measured up a half a quart of blended food, and that is one pound of food right there. So I feed my bins roughly uh, three quarters of a pound. I don't think I put that much in them. But anywhere from three quarters to a pound per bin, when I do feed them, they will eat it. They are they have a voracious appetite. So let them run down, let them get acclimated. Three days later, come back. I feed in the middle and put my food here. I do not mix food in the bedding because you then if you do, um, like when you're making your when you're prepping your bedding, don't don't put a bunch of chopped up food in in here and and stuff. Basically, you turn the thing into a big gigantic compost pile. If it heats up, the whole thing will heat up. So when I feed down the middle, I put my food in there. If it happens to heat up, the worms have somewhere to go. They go from here to there and get away from it. Or if they don't like it, or if it ain't ready, they'll stay out here. Once that food gets ready and gets the bacteria built up on it, and 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 the micros are breaking it down, and it gets ripe for them to eat they come in and they start munching and that's the easiest thing to do is just take it slow and easy um check out a couple other channels see how they do it this is how i do it uh, this is how you can do it i got 10 bucks the stuff here come out of a compost pile um a leaf leaf pile um a couple years old i just dug down to the bottom scooped it up brought it home um we put it in a couple of trash cans, throw it in the back of the truck, bring it home. I have a place I can get it. If you know your neighbor that mows his yard and bags it and he puts it out to the curb, be like, hey, buddy, instead of doing that, throw it over the fence and I'll take it. Take it to your house and throw it up in the corner somewhere and dump it out, pile it up, let it compost, break down. You can throw some food scraps in it too and that'll actually help it um, break down faster. But grass is like the perfect mix. It's the perfect mix of greens and browns together to compost. And grass clippings will compost and cook off and, and break down faster than anything I've seen. I've got a pile probably three foot tall, four foot long, five foot long out there in my yard on a concrete pad where I mow my yard. I just blow all the grass up on the pad and then I let it break down. Um, other than that, I mean, it's not really complicated. This is cheap and easy. We're five bucks into this bin. Uh, the bedding was free. I didn't go out and buy it. I didn't order blocks of anything and soak it. And I didn't spend a bunch of time shredding and doing cardboard and uh, newspaper. I don't like newspaper and, and, and bill paper because it seems to get real squishy and squishy and sticky. And it'll clump up. Now, you could do half and half. If you had some of this, you could mix your paper and your cardboard in with it. And then that way it would keep it from being less gooey. And so um, 
But if you can get this, this is their natural environment. This is what they eat in the wild. So that's probably the best thing for them to have, I feel like. That's my opinion. I'm not a worm guru, okay? I'm just a guy that's been doing it for a couple of years. Um, four years, I think. So anyway, um, that that's that's the gist of it right there. Like I said, let them run down. You see how, how long it took? Didn't take long. Let them run down. Put the lid on it. Sling it over on the shelf. Let them get to chilling and, and relaxing and then I come in, I, I pull back through here, put about three quarters of a pound of blended food in, cover it up. The reason why I blend the food, and I dig all the way down to the very bottom of the bin like that, and put the, I, I put a little bit of bedding, dry bedding, and I put the food in there. And you can feed on the side if you want to. I like to feed in the middle. That way it gives them an equal space around to be away, and then it brings them in. And when they come in, they'll bump into each other and you'll start the mating process and keeping them happy is one big part of making sure they'll mate. They're not going to mate up in a, in a bad bin that's got um, pHs off or anything. Um, beddings are cured a lot of problems. Uh, mites, moisture, um, pot worms, um, acidity, uh, your pH is off. Throw some bedding in there. Add some more bedding. Add, add a couple more quarts of bedding. Mix it in. Fluff it. Get the air Get the bedding in there, help absorb some of the moisture if you've gotten it way too wet. I run mine a little wet on the wet side, but I don't have standing water. But the bedding will fix a lot of your problems. Um, other than that, like I said, that's that's the gist of it there. Feed them. Um, keep a check on it. Don't overfeed them. Don't, they, they don't have to eat. I could, I could literally not feed this bin. I could do this in the worms, and I could be done. I could let them run that. I just feed them vegetables and stuff like that to help with the castings, to make the castings better, um, make the worms healthier. It's a little, you know, everything in moderation, though. I don't, I, they love bananas and apples, but I don't feed them bananas and apples all the time. I feed them corn, green beans, potatoes, uh, lettuce, uh, zucchini, whatever I get my hands on. Um, I, I, I shy away from um, flour, wheat, and grain products. I do do chow, but if I do my chow, I put it down low and I and I and I cover it up. I don't put it on the top. I, I put it down inside and cover it like regular food. And then that way I, I try to keep the pests off of everything. And so um, that's it. There you go. One five dollar worm bin and a hundred plus worms. I'll mark this bin and we'll keep up with it and see how it does. Um, it won't be in the next reset. I've got, I don't know, 15 other bins like this to reset and then three um, big bins. So um, anyway, that's it. Y'all have a good day. Uh, let me know what you think. Hit the uh, bing bing, um, bang bang, and the ding ding. And uh, let me know where you wh what you're thinking and how you're liking it. And y'all have a good day.